Good morning, everybody. My name is Kelsey, and I'll be your host for today's virtual farm tour. I'm so excited to introduce you to Farmer Tyler. We're here at Beck Farms, and I just want to remind you all that you are seeing everything behind the scenes live. Before we get started, I want to make sure you guys have the best experience possible. In order to do that, we recommend that we make your Zoom full screen. Even if you're on YouTube or Facebook, same thing. Push that out to full screen so you can see as much of the farm as possible. The next thing I wanna remind you of is using the question and answer feature. I want to know your questions. I'm gonna ask them to Farmer Tyler in real time. He's gonna answer them. So be sure to figure out where that question and answer button is and you can pop in there and insert your questions as the tour goes on. The other thing I'll remind you though, Tyler's gonna to cover a lot of information. So even if your question isn't answered right away, it might be coming later. But without further ado, let's go find Farmer Tyler, come on. All right, hi Tyler, how are you this morning? Good morning, Kelsey, how are you? Good morning, I brought all my students with me live today. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us this morning on the farm. Awesome. So we're going to get right into it. We see we made it to the farm. Lots of cows. Tell us a little bit about your dairy farm. Well, we are located here in South Central New York, about an hour south of Syracuse in between Cortland and Ithaca. Um, on this location and between our other location, we milk about 2000 cows um, in total. It takes about a team of 35 people and about 3500 acres to accommodate that many cows along with the young stock. And I'm farming today with my brother. We are the fourth generation and my father as well, who's the third generation. This farm was started way back when in around 1920 by my great grandfather. So it just passed 100 year mark and we're super excited to keep farming a little bit differently today, but the same goals in mind, bringing in healthy milk to uh, all the communities around us. Oh my gosh, 100 years. That's amazing. That is so cool. So I know we're going to see a lot of cool stuff today, but you know, I can't ignore these big, beautiful cows in the background. So tell me, we're seeing cows and you told us how many. Remind us again, how many cows? Back farms, we have about 2,000 cows, about 1,200 on this facility here. And this is one of our main milking facilities, milking barns you see uh, in the background right behind us. Okay, so these cows here, how old are they and how big are they? These girls range from anywhere from three years old up to maybe nine, 10 years old. And they can be anywhere from 1,200 pounds, 1,400 pounds, 1,500 pounds. They get really big and um, they therefore can produce a lot of milk. Okay, that makes sense. Now, we're seeing all black and white cows. And I think our cow cam is wandering around too. I'm not seeing any other different colored cows. So what type of cows are these? That's right. These are called a Holstein breed and they're your predominant milking cow all across uh, the United States. Other cows, you might see some jerseys that are brown and other different colors, but here on Beck Farms, we're uh, just Holstein. Okay, is there a particular reason you guys chose Holsteins all those years ago? They're your uh, volume milk dominant cow. So jerseys, for example, are more rich in your fat and proteins, the components of the milk, and we're focusing more on kind of a higher volume concentration. So just more milk per cow. Okay, gotcha. So these are like the, the rock stars of producing the most milk. We like to think so, yeah. Oh, all right. Okay, that makes sense. Now we're seeing, uh, Tyler, I'm sure my students saw, I was just outside and, and it's cold. A little chilly this morning. Winter hasn't given up yet. But these cows, they seem really comfortable in this barn. So tell us about kind of this barn and, and why they're inside. So this type of year, um, a little colder. We like to keep our barns warm because our cows don't like when it's really cold and don't like it when it's uh, really warm. So cooler. Uh, temperatures like uh, March, February, January. Um, you'll see on the corners of our barns are curtains and they're actually run by an automatic computer system. And so when it dips under about 30 degrees, that computer tells you, it says, sends a signal to the curtain and tells the curtains to slowly close. And then when it gets above 30, 35 degrees, they slowly start to open. So we can provide the best optimal airflow uh, quality for these girls because uh, air is key for um, keeping them uh, healthy. Oh my gosh. So this is like a smart barn, basically. I mean, it's monitoring kind of the air and everything that's going on. Everything that's going on outside, even when you guys aren't necessarily right next to you. Exactly. It's uh, hard to keep track of that many barns and that many cows just between 
it is 35 people, but there's a lot more animals and cows. So we really need to rely on the technology to help us along the way to keep these farms running as optimally throughout the year as possible. Got it. Okay. And I know sometimes, you know, it's not cold. I think we see some fans too. So you must have some ways to keep your cows cool in the summer along with keeping them warm in the winter. But if you fast forward about four months from the future today, you're sitting in the middle of August. It's going to be about 90, 95 degrees in here on a hot day. And cows really uh, get pretty uncomfortable when it's that warm. So again, we're trying to focus as much as we can on cow comfort. So behind us, there's a bunch of hanging fans that once again, run on a computer system and kick on when it gets to a certain temperature. And this bracket right behind me is actually uh, for a sprinkler system. So we combine air movement along with water to cool cows really quick to um, get them, get their body temperatures back to a stable point so they can continue to make healthy uh, milk for all you guys. All right. All right. Got it. So we didn't even ask you before, Tyler. Now you've got all these cows. Where is the milk going? The milk, once it leaves the farm, um, a big tanker shows up about once a day to take all this milk in a big holding tank, pumps it onto their truck and takes it about an hour north of here to a uh, milk plant. And that mm -hmm. milk plant will take it in any various locations. Sometimes it'll go towards yogurt. Sometimes it'll get, they'll actually take the milk and take the um, powder out of the milk okay. and therefore has a much longer shelf life and it can go on a boat and go to places like China or Italy or literally across the world. And sometimes it goes to things like baby formula. Oh, so cool. all over the place, our milk goes a little bit everywhere, which is really cool to see. Awesome. So we've got a couple questions coming in, Tyler. We're seeing on our cow, on our cow can. Some cows are standing up, some cows are eating, some cows are laying down. So talk to me about uh, how cows spend their day. Yeah, about 24 hours in a day, about 10 of those hours, a cow will spend either eating or digesting her feed. Um, ruminating is what it's called. A cow has uh, four stomachs, basically one kind of big stomach set up into four different compartments. And with that much uh, area down there, she eats a lot of feed and spends a lot of time digesting that feed. So about 10 hours a day, just eating and digesting about 12 to 14 hours a day sleeping. So they really love their sleep. And the other time is spent possibly just walking around, visiting friends. And uh, obviously going to the milking parlor three times a day to uh, get milked. Got it. So we're seeing, Tyler, too, some of your cows actually lay in their stalls. What are they laying on? So a couple of different barns use a couple of different products. This barn specifically here uses a mixture of paper and sometimes sawdust. And that's top dressed over waterbeds, believe it or not. So I know some of you guys might have waterbeds at home. Our cows use the exact same thing. They're waterbeds. This mattress is filled with water on the inside, and uh, we just put some bedding on top to keep them um, dry and comfortable. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. We were actually able to see a cow jiggle the water bed with our <laughs> cow cam. That's pretty neat. They, they seem to enjoy it. So, okay, we've covered them laying down. We've covered them walking around with their friends. Now, eating. You said they spend 10 hours a day digesting. How much are they eating then? A cow will eat about 100 pounds of feed per day. So I did. Oh my gosh. Yeah, a lot when you divide times that by uh, 2,000 cows, it's truckloads of truckloads you got to feed in to keep these girls happy and uh, converting the feed into milk. Okay. Hey, Tyler, let's talk about what these cows are eating. So I see you brought some buckets with you. So talk to me about what's, what's in all this feed. Yeah, so a cow's diet, about 60% of our diet is food we'll produce on farm between our corn and our haylage. These are fields you'll probably see driving by in your towns on the way to and from school. Uh, lots of big fields and farms use these fields with all their big equipment to harvest the feed, put it into our big bunks to feed cows year round. So 60% of the diet is our homegrown ingredients and about 40% of the diet is grain that we'll purchase on farm and a mix into a high mix of so your canola, your soybean, your uh, cornmeal, all get it's put into a high mix and that really drives your milk production and helps uh, keep the girls going strong. Oh, okay. Very cool. So now, Tyler, the cows, we see them eating. It looks like they're eating a big mixture. So do you, why, why do you mix it together? We call that a TMR, a total mixed ration. And we actually use a really cool technology. It's like an iPad linked in with a computer system, linked in with a big monster scale. Okay. So our feeder will um, on the computer dash, it'll come up one ingredient in time and very specifically say how much of each pound of each ingredient he wants to feed. And we put this into basically a big tub. If you imagine in your kitchen, you have possibly a pot with like a feeder going in. That's kind of what we're doing on the farm. We have this huge tub with a couple of augers that are using all these ingredients, filling them one at a time, and then mixing up for about five to six minutes it takes 
And then all these ingredients are well balanced. So there's not a slug of corn in one side, a slug of hay in the other, and a slug of grain. That would probably get the cows pretty sick. So it's really important for our equipment to mix it as consistent as possible. So wherever the girls go to eat, all of them down the feed bunk, um, it's the same ration and uh, same consistency for them. Awesome. So it's kind of like a casserole or like a tossed salad or a smoothie, like all mixed together, all the nutrients all together. So nobody can pick through for the good stuff. Pretty much. They have, you could say a boring diet because it's the same thing every day, but a boring cow is a very happy, healthy cow actually, because they like things consistent. They like to wake up, do the same thing every day. So we try to keep it kind of the same standard, same time of day they get fed, same order of the groups and same ration, but that's the way they like it. And that's the way they do best. Very cool. Okay. Tyler, you give us so much good information. I think it's time we test the students. So you guys are going to see a couple questions. We want you to do your best to answer them. And then, Tyler, I know you were kind enough to show us the milking process, which is what our students are going to see up after their questions. So we're going to leave the students to uh, test their knowledge and check out the parlor, and we will meet them back live at the calf barn. Perfect. We have 20 girls on the left side and 20 girls on the right side. So 40 cows can get milked at one time. They come in from the far corner, walk all the way down and line up side by side, one after another. So each cow comes in three times a day, eight hours apart, because this parlor is milking 24 hours a day. So they never really close down besides the washing for about an hour after each shift. So this girl right here makes about 95 pounds a day, which is give or take about nine gallons of milk. So if you open up your fridge and see about one gallon of milk that you're gonna have for breakfast, imagine this one cow producing nine gallons that can fill your fridge. And we have about 1,200 cows. So that's a lot of gallons that we try and push out the door to feed a lot of families. So when the girls walk in and line up, the very first thing we do is make sure their teats are clean. So our milk is here used, it looks like kind of like a water gun, but it actually squirts a blue soap. And this is our disinfectant. And this will be put on first thing It'll stay on for about 20, 30 seconds to really absorb in the dirt. And then you use our nice soft microfiber towels to wipe them clean. And then they're basically ready to be attached and collect the milk. 
We use this machine to collect the milk. It's got four different corners on it. One goes on each teat for four different teats. It's run through air. So basically air is more or less massaging the milk out of the cow, kind of like a very calm vacuum. It doesn't hurt the cows by any means. If you look down the line, they're not kicking. They're not uncomfortable. They're just they actually like to be milked because of the milk is a pressure and it kind of builds up in their system. So after eight hours, they know it's time to be milked. So they enjoy the process. Each quarter gets connected and the milk gets blended into this claw down below and the milk will travel through the line kind of underneath through the meter. This meter is the machine that is actually weighing the milk. So that's what's collecting how much each cow is giving and knows kind of the flow through of pounds per minute. So if you look up here on the computer, it spits out a bunch of cool information like how much milk she gave compared to last milking. So she gave two and a half pounds more than her last milking, which is a total of 31 and a half pounds this milking. And the way the computer knows this is that each cow has a button in the corner of their ear. And basically when they come into the parlor, they're checking into the parlor essentially, like you check into a hotel and that button is talking to our computer system and it'll give that information of how much you gave and what time she's actually in the parlor and feed it back to us each milking she's in. So at the end of the day, we can go in and look up all of our cows and see what each cow gave and what time they were milked. And you can follow the long line of stainless steel tubing and it'll go through a receiver jar and then pumped into another jar and it essentially goes over the wall into our big bulk tank storage. Yeah. So if you continue to follow the tubing up to the ceiling, it goes up through the wall, comes out on the other side of the wall. I don't know if you want to climb up here or not. It goes into the big receiver tank. This is kind of our holding tank. To it's basically a balancing tank to make all the milk come in at one spot. And then it starts the cooling process where it'll go from 98 degrees, about the temperature of a cow, right all the way down to about 40 degrees, which is the temperature you want to store milk so it doesn't gain any bacteria in a matter of seconds. So it goes through this tank, goes through the whole cooling process. Our plate coolers are on the other side of the wall, which work really hard to make, drop that milk about 50 degrees from 90 to 40 degrees. And then it'll end up in our big bulk tanks. So after our milk is collected and the big truck comes and takes it away, it typically goes to a factory that takes it into a powder. And that powder is used to make things like baby formulas or possibly sports drinks or different types of powdered milk. Awesome. All right, students, we're back. Now, before you get to see about these uh, lovely, adorable additions on the farm, we got to make sure you're paying attention. What do, you, what do you think? I think they need to answer some questions about milking. Those will probably be good. Make sure they were watching. Yeah, make sure you guys got them all. So check out these questions and we'll be right back.
All right, everybody. Welcome back. We made a quick transition, Tyler. We're over in your calf barn now here with some lovely additions. We had a couple questions, though. You want to answer a couple questions? Sure. Okay. So one of the questions we had was, are all the cows here on the farm girls? They are. That is correct. Yep. Okay. Got it. Do you keep any uh, male cows or boy cows on the farm? No. Um, boys leave the farm about two to three days after birth, so pretty soon, and they'll go out to another farm out in um, Midwest, usually. They have the big beef lots for uh, boy cows, and uh, we just focus on the girls. The dairy is our specialty. Okay, got it. That makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, another question that we had come through was another reminder of how many cows you have here on the farm total? About 2,000 cows and then another 1,500 okay. baby calves or young stock. Very cool. And our last question that came through was, can you have uh, or do you welcome visitors to come to the farm, not just virtually? Yes, if we know ahead of time, we love to host and we have in the past some small classrooms and uh, visitors. It's a lot easier to have uh, big masses virtually, but if we have small quantities, we're always happy to have them on farm. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right. I can't stand it any longer. Tell me about these calves. They are so cute. Like everyone to meet 9,092. And unfortunately, they don't have names like you or I because I can't come up with uh, over 2,000 names at night sitting in my bed. So we go with numbers instead of names. So here's her tag okay. one on each side with her number. And she is about four days old. So you're looking at her, you might think she might be a couple of years old. No, nope, she's about four days old. Dear okay, today. how much does she weigh then? Uh, when they come out, they weigh about 80 pounds, 80 to 90 pounds. Okay. And then we try and aim for them to gain about two pounds a day. So maybe she's up to about 85, 86 now. Okay, two pounds every day. How much is she eating to gain two pounds every day? We give them... About eight quarts of milk is what they pop out at. Okay. And they'll get fed once in the morning, once at night. And then okay. we'll supplement that with uh, the grain. You'll see in the grain buckets that one on each. Uh, yep. Then. Okay. So now another question we're seeing, you know, we're hanging out with her in her pen and uh, our calf cam or cow cam now is showing us some of the others. They're each housed individually in their own space. Why yep. do you do that? They're open pens. They can see their neighbors. They like to play with their neighbors through the gates, but just like I have a young son in school and uh, sometimes he comes home with a bunch of germs from other kids mm. and calves are the same way, unfortunately. They like to like pass some of their germs all the way uh, to their neighbors. So if we keep them only being able to touch possibly one neighbor at a time, if one gets sick, then um, we limit that bug to maybe just her calf and um, one section of the barn. So we can treat them really quickly, get her happy without having that bug spread quickly. If they were all in one big house or one big uh, group pen, it'd be a little harder to... Uh, control uh, okay. any sort of bugs that they might get at a young age. Yeah, and we saw too, they're like this while they're young, maybe and a little more susceptible, but obviously we just saw all the cows together in the big pen, the big cows, I should say. Yep, they, uh, as they get older, their immunity grows and they can slowly get grouped with maybe a few cows out of town and then it grows to more and then eventually they're in a pen with uh, over a hundred friends they get to hang out with. And there are farms that group calves together, they have a different way to do it. They use a bunch of sanitizing methods and work really hard at uh, grouping them, but for us, it's easiest to do it this way. That's what we're used to, so. All right, that it. makes sense. We talked about the weather today earlier too, and you and I are obviously bundled up and it looks like these calves are quite fashionable in their pink jackets. So tell me a little bit about how we're keeping these calves comfortable. Yeah, so since they are all little ladies, we went with the pretty color pink matching. Uh, yeah, I put on my jacket this morning and she keeps her jacket on mm -hmm. all day long because okay. we looked on the weather this morning was 26 degrees out, so still not quite warm enough for them to be on their own. Uh, when it gets about below 60 or 50 degrees, they really say, start liking that extra help to uh, keep them warm at okay. night, along with this uh, hay bedding you see uh, nestled in. They use it like a nest and try and snuggle down tight because uh, if it does dip into the teens or single digits, they do uh, like to add extra help staying warm. Got it. She's telling us it's time to move on. So Tyler, you could show us uh, some of the rest of this calf barn while we cover a couple other questions. So you actually mentioned the grain that these calves are eating. So what's what's in that mix? Let's let's take a peek at that. I think our, yeah, we can open up one and we can show that. Yeah. It's similar to the grain we feed our cows on top of a bunch of mashed corn pellets you can kind of pick out. And so it's a high concentration, um, basically specializes in uh, growth for them to really help us hit that two pounds a day average these girls need to um, quickly uh, double, the, our goal is to double their body weight in about a couple months. So by using a high quality grain with high quality milk, um, we're able to do that. 
Okay, we had another great question come in. How many calves are born a year here? Good question. For us, I think it's about, let's see, we probably average about seven or eight a day. So that times 365 is how many we're born. We keep about 800 of them. So we need about seven to 800 of them to keep to um, have our, our future herd, basically. So a calf is born, and two years from the day she was born, she will enter the milking herd. Uh, and start to give milk herself and eventually have another calf and that calf will take two years and then enter the milking herd from there. So a lot of our calves we don't have to keep because we don't need that many um, or else we'll have to keep building more and more barns to keep up with us. And some we sell to other farms or out to the Midwest but about that 800 mark is the amount we have to keep to keep uh, our herd at the same size as it is today. All right, very cool. So we had another question come in, which is how do you keep this all clean? It, it looks super clean, was the, was the comment. Yeah, so cleanliness is the biggest key with dealing with baby calves because they can um, get sick with their immunity, still learning all the different bugs around the world. Um, so A is uh, individual housing, like we already went over. B is once uh, the calf is old and she moves out, we take all these pens outside, use a disinfectant with a big pressure washer and hose down anything from the concrete pads the beds are on to the pens themselves, to the cat feeders themselves, and then let them sit. The longer they sit, the cleaner um, they'll become and the more kind of the bacteria will dry up and um, they'll be ready for the next round of calves that go in soon after. Oh, wow, very cool. Okay, so now you mentioned that these calves will be two years old when they have a calf and start milking. Obviously, um, they, you said they get grouped together. Do they stay with their same age group all the way through? Typically, yes, the group they're in gets bigger and bigger as. Um, you combine more and more animals together as our facilities grow and get bigger pens. But they do recognize who they um, grow up with because when they're in a big barn, many times you'll see 9,092 and 9,091. They're sitting together as calves. And more times than that, you will see them sitting together in big stalls as cows next to each other. So they are funny, but they do remember the, the friends they grew up with the way back when. All right. I got to ask. I know you've mentioned that each cow or each cow or calf has a number. How in the world do you keep them all straight though? Do you use some technology? Do you have a spreadsheet? Good question. So besides the big yellow number in each of the ears, they also have in their left ear a little white button. And that button will actually register it with our milking equipment. So when she goes to get milked every day, this is when she's two years old and enters the milking facility. Um, and her in and will tell us exactly how much milk she made for that day. And from there, we can generate reports and figure out which cows made a lot of milk. And more importantly, which ones made not a lot of milk. So we can go see them and see if there's a reason why they didn't make a lot for that day. Maybe they're coming down with a uh, small bite of pneumonia of indigestion. We'll go treat them quickly and get them back up where they should be. So it's a good health monitoring system to make sure everyone's happy, healthy all year long. Oh my gosh. So that serves as kind of their all purpose, driver's license, medical records, all their information all in one place. Speaking of technology, Tyler, I know you mentioned to the smart barns. Um, we haven't really talked about this, but what other technology do you really like utilizing on the farm? So if we remember back uh, looking at our first stop with the cow barn, on one ear was this white button we we're talking about. On the other ear, there was a health monitor, an activity monitor. And that actually counts how many steps she takes in a day. So we know when cows come to eat and are ready to be bred so they can um, have a calf and we can complete complete the cycle and continue over and over again, they spike in activity and they do a lot of laps around the pen. So that activity monitor tells us when her activity based on her history spikes, then we need to go breed her and then we'll basically have another calf soon after. And it also measures how much we said 10 hours a day is that benchmark, how many hours he's been eating. It'll also measure how many hours that cow is eating specifically herself. And then if she drops below a certain threshold, we'll know also to check her, um, see if something's going on. So one button has the eating measurement, the other button has a milk measurement. They kind of come together in a big fancy list and then it generates who we got to pay attention to that next day. Very cool. So we had a question come in. All of our calves are looking really sleepy right now, but I know uh, we were here just a little bit earlier and they were up jumping around. So maybe explaining how active these calves are. Are they just a little tired or do they just eat? Yeah. So we're here about nine, 10 o'clock now and they had their breakfast about three hours ago. And you can imagine your big meals, big holiday meals, you stuff up and then you're just exhausted and ready to crash. And that's what these girls do. They spend so much energy growing and uh, eating their milk, their grain. And after they get full bellies, they're just super excited to just take a long uh, nap throughout the day. So this is their post-breakfast nap time. So 
We won't interrupt you for too long. <laughs> Got it. That makes sense. Okay, Tyler, we had one more question coming through, which is what happens to all the manure? Manure, the fun part. Um, so uh, back in the barns, we didn't really get a zoom in at that. Um, on our floors where the cows are standing, there's actually an automatic sled, a scraper, and it's run on a cable system. And that's cleaning the barns back and forth all day long. And that brings the manure to the end of the barn. So there's these small little holes, uh, big enough for the manure to go through, small enough that a cow or a person shouldn't have to ever fall through. And that captures the manure and brings it to these big pits, holding pits for us. And a couple of times a year, we empty those pits, put them on the field. And again, it's another evolving cycle of uh, the nutrients from the manure goes back on the field. That helps the plants grow for that next cutting. And that next year, you're harvesting those plants and putting them in the bunk to feed the cows. So it's just a continuous recycling process of uh, using our resources to create resources for the future. That is very cool, Tyler. It seems like you guys do a lot to, like you said, recycle what's here on the farm, keep the systems going, care for the young animals, all the way up to your oldest animals. Now, obviously, these animals are all a couple days old. How long will they be on the farm with you? An average cow on us uh, enters a herd about two years old, and we have cows that are on their seventh or eighth calf uh, that they've uh, given us. So a cow will probably give us a half a year on average. One important piece that we haven't gone over yet is a lot of people assume cows just grow up and make milk, make milk, but they're mammals. And very importantly, they need to have a baby in order to start that milk production process. So it's very important for us to make sure cows have a baby about once a year to keep that milk production flowing, hence the investment in all these technologies with the health activity monitoring system so we can watch that very closely. So yeah, we, it's not uncommon for us to have cows that are eight, nine, 10 years old and uh, still going strong. That's why we focus on cow comfort as much as you do to keep them uh, staying here as long as possible. That is awesome, Tyler. We are running up against the end of our time, but I did wanna ask you if you would share with the students what your favorite cow is if you have one. My favorite cow is at our other facility about 10 minutes from here. Her name is Ella. She does have a name, but she is special to me, 4597. And she's one that if you walk by, she'll get right up and be very excited to come over and I'll greet you. So she's a, she's a farm pet and hopefully she's here for many years to come. Awesome, okay, final question. If you could recommend to the students, a dairy product that they should enjoy today? Oh, it's a little cold out. My go-to is always ice cream, but it is 26 degrees out, so that's tough. Uh, starting the day with yogurt is always my favorite, and uh, ending the day with a big glass of milk with dinner is great. So if you can open your fridge and you see that gallon of milk, and if you can think of us instead of your local uh, grocery store, uh, I did my job today because I'd love for you guys all to associate milk coming from farms instead of from grocery stores because the grocery stores is only the middleman bringing the milk from us to you. So remember that this is where it all starts and magic happens and not your aisle nine local grocery store. So if you can get that point across then I did my job. Oh my gosh. Well, we learned a lot today, Tyler. I mean, between the technology and how much you're doing to care for each of your cows and how much you're doing to care for the land and the community. I mean, I'm still shocked. 60% of everything you feed these 2000 animals is grown right here on the farm. That's amazing. So here's what we want you students to remember. You heard it here first. Your milk is coming from a good place. It's coming from a local farm. Tyler, we can't thank you enough for opening up your farm and showing us behind the scenes. For those of you who may wanna see more of Farmer Tyler, we are gonna do one more tour in a little bit, just in about an hour and a half. So if you have time, join us again. Also remember we have two other tours in our spring series, as well as three tours this fall, right? So we should check out some other farms. I mean, we love you, Tyler, but you know, we want you guys to see as many farms as possible. We're so glad that you joined us today and we hope to see you again soon.